हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट मेथड्स और फंक्शंस सो दिस बिलोंग्स टू चैप्टर नंबर नाइन ओके दिस इज वन ऑफ आवर वन ऑफ द इम्पॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स फॉर द फर्स्ट सेमेस्टर एग्जामिनेशन ओके हियर यू कैन सी दैट हाई रिटर्न ए सैम्पल प्रोग्राम दिस प्रोग्राम चेक्स whether two numbers are prime or not as you can see we are getting two numbers m and n as user inputs right so we are checking these two numbers are prime or not you can see on the page i have divided that program into two parts part 1 and part 2 if you observe that part 1 and part 2 you can see that we are doing the same thing part 1 we are checking whether the number m is prime or not and part 2 we are checking whether the number n is prime or not okay so this sample program here we are not using the concept of methods okay so what you can see is that we can we are repeating the same process in the program right so in part 1 and part 2 we are doing the same thing that means we are repeating the same process so now we are going to discuss how we can include the concept of methods to overcome this okay here you can see i have rewritten that program using the method so here you see first i am getting the two numbers as user input then i created a method called check prime and check prime accept a number and check that method is a that that number is a prime or not right so when you compare the last example i mean the program we made without using the method and this program you can see that when we executed the program by using the method or by using the concept of functions we are able to reduce the number of lines in the code and also we enable the reusability that means we are instead of writing that program again i mean a part of code again and again we are just reusing the program okay reusing that part of the code so here you can see that i created a method called check prime so this check prime we are reusing okay here you can see the syntax for creating a method so see the syntax we should have an access specifier modifier a return type method name and parameter list in order to declare or create a method or a function we need we need to follow the given syntax right so here we have an example in this example you can see that i have not mentioned any access specifiers right so it starts with a modifier static void check prime where static is the modifier void is the return type check prime is the method name int a in the bracket that is called the parameter list the first line of the method that is called the method header okay the first line of the method block is called the method header okay now we can see the terms associated with the method creation first one was access specifier so access specifier what is an access specifier it deals with the scope of a method it tells the accessibility of that particular method by the other class members 
when a method is specified as public it means the method can be accessed globally globally in the sense it can be accessed accessed even from the external classes when a method is specified as private when a method is private means that can be only accessible within the class so within the class means where it it is the class where it, that particular method is created within that particular class only when a method is specified as protected so protected means it can be accessible by the inherited class members also so when a method is specified as protected means it can be accessed by the inherited inherited class members also okay but it is not available to the public but available to the inherited members when we create a method without mentioning any access specifier so you can see the given example have not used any access specifier so when the access specifier is not mentioned it may create it as a default access specifier i request you to please refer the textbook for or you can also refer the 11th class textbook to find the difference between the default access specifier public private and protected access specifiers okay okay here we can see the return type so return type it is it is the data type defined before the method name in the method header you have seen that here uh, we use the return type void check prime right void check prime so actually we use the void the value or the term void when that particular method not returns any value okay so please read that return type is there so it shows the type of value written from the method then we have the method name method name means the name of the method when we create the method names we have to strictly follow the identifier rules then we have the method block method block means it is the body of the method or body of the function we know that within that curly braces after the method header we have a curly brace and a opening brace and a closing brace there so that the content within those called curly braces are called the method block it is of course a set of statements that set of statements that that is that need to be performed for accomplishing a particular task okay so now a return statement we usually use a return statement at the end to terminate a method so you can see the rules for whenever we use a return statement in a method as the last line we, there are certain rules associated with you can see that no statement in the method can be executed after the return statement a method can return only a single value a method may have more than one termination points but only one executed at a time the value returned by the method could be a primitive or non primitive so that means it can return a primitive or a non primitive value if the method does not return a value then the return type of the method should be declared as void that is what we have seen in the previous example where we were using void check prime right okay so please read this 
statements associated with the return statement okay here you can see a see an example for a function so this function name of the function is check prime the modifier is static return type is boolean we have one parameter that is int a so you can see what is inside the curly braces that is a method body right so here you can see that this method having more than one termination point that is if c is equal to zero it will return true that is a termination point else it is return false that is a second termination point and we, we can see that this will be executed only one at a time whenever e, c is equal to zero then only it will return true otherwise it will not return false okay okay here we are going to discuss or we are going to see how we can invoke or a call a method from the main method every java program is having a main method right and here in this program given you can see that we have two methods one is the main method and another method is the check prime right so now we are going to see how we can call that check prime method from the main method here in this example you can see that we have the access specifier we are using the access specifier as static whenever we mention a method or a variable as static the advantage is that that particular method or a variable it can be accessed without using the object so that is what you are seeing in the example when we invoke that particular method check prime in the check prime method you can see that it returns a boolean type because of that i created a two boolean variables in the main method boolean t comma f t is equal to check prime of m f is equal to check prime of n whenever we execute that particular method check prime we know that it may return either a true or a false so whatever the value that either a true or false it will get stored on the variable t and for f it will store the return it will store the value return from the check prime of n okay so here the notable thing is that whenever we use the modifier static that particular method or a variable it can be accessed without using the objects and here we are invoking the method using the object as you can see in the method check prime in this example I removed the static modifier from that whenever the method is non static that is not static the method can be accessed using the objects only so because of that reason you can see that I have created an object for the class prime so that is why the line you can see prime obj is equal to new prime so obj is the name of the object using that name i am accessing the check prime obj dot check prime of m and obj dot check prime of n okay so this is an example of a method accessing using the object or invoking a method from the main method using the object whenever the method is non-static the method can be accessed using the objects. Okay.